This is the second example of axial stress and I'm just going to be combining uh, both tension and compression in a problem just to kind of see where that leads. Um, just to kind of give us a basic layout of the problem. Let me draw it for us. We have the ground here. Uh, let's just say we have some once again we'll stick with cylinders because they're very easy to calculate the area for and then let's just say we have a small pipe not even pipe just a rod sticking up and from that rod we have a force pulling up that is 200 pounds and from this base like this larger circle uh, the cylinder shape let's just say that we have two forces pushing down on each side and maybe 150 pounds a pop okay uh, just to kind of give us some direction here let's say that this diameter is 1.5 inches and this diameter right here is going to be 6 inches okay but rather than making it just some some solid mass of 6 inches let's say that it's 5 inch diameter hole as well. Okay, so we'll just have to assume that there's some infinite stiffness plate that's attaching the rod and this hollow cylinder together. Anyway, okay, so let, let, let's just figure that out. One thing we should realize is that uh, we're going to keep the convention that tension is positive and compression is negative. That way we don't confuse ourselves. So if I were to label these in two different sections here, I would say that the top one, just name it A and this one B. Well, if we were to calculate for the stress at A, we would need both force and area. We'll realize that within, within A's section, the only force that's being applied is going to be this 200 pounds which is at the end we do not have any other that like you have all you have is 200 pounds pulling on it and then everything that's attached to the wall resisting that pull that's how you have to look at it literally you have to look at it like this let me draw up a quick picture this is the reaction of the wall this is your 200 pounds that's how you need to look at this at section A so that gives us our force as 200 pounds over the area which pi r squared pi 0.75 inches squared which if I calculate that out for you that'll equal 113.18 psi perfect so 113 psi we know that's tension what about B what about B? Let's calculate that out. 
we know that the tension at B is going to be once again F over A. Now when you think of F I don't want you to think oh whatever force is being applied onto it because there is a net force at this situation. If we are to look at the situation that we have now what you're gonna have is a body like this with a pull of 200 and a push of essentially combined 150 each or 300 total. So what I see when I look at this is a compression of 100. 200 minus 2 times 150 or an F net of negative 100 pounds. That's what is actually, that's what's going to be, that's the net force that will be going through this material. So negative 100 over our area, which our area is a whole new separate thing because of the unique uh, situation we have here. Let me just calculate it for us. If you have, say, a, a shape like this, um, this being 6 inches diameter and this being 5 inches diameter, then we can just calculate the area as pi over 4 and then d squared, so 6 squared minus 5 squared. That's just subtracting the two areas from each other. If I calculate that out, that turns out to be 8.64 inches squared. 8.64. So if I plug that beast in to the equation above, right here, what you end up getting is some stress at B of negative 11.57 psi. Realize that the negative means that we have a net compression in this uh, cross-section. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Um, leave any comments for requests. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it and stick around for the next video.